Hey y'all, it's Billy Hale with Billy Hale Leather, and today I'm going to go over the things you need to know to get going with your cowboy sewing machine. I was just on the phone with Ryan Neal yesterday, and I said, Ryan, I think I'm going to do a video that just talks about everything that I needed to know to actually sew something. And he said, great, Jim. I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what those facts are. I wish I knew myself. And so we actually talked about some key things that you might need to know to work the machine, do it right, and not ruin a piece after you've got to a certain point where you need to sew it. And uh, so let's just do that. We're going to start in. I'm going to give you uh, all my top list of things you should always ask yourself before you start sewing. And then some other tips as we go. All right. Okay, so first let's talk about how I got going. So first I started sewing little pieces of scrap leather. And then I took this old belt and I started uh, just freehanding some stitching. And I thought, wow, that actually looks pretty pro. So that got me excited. This is just kind of a teaser uh, that will make you want to sew a little bit more. Although I'm sure you really want to sew if you're watching this video. Here's a uh, holster I made. I double stitched it here using the machine. And the beauty is, of course, is that it's so much faster, so much less time involved. And, and your stitches are nice and clean and straight. So I got this machine. I'm going to yell at my wife here. Angela, how long ago do you think I got this thing? Two weeks ago? Yeah. I got this thing two weeks ago. And I have a full-time job, so it's not like I'm at the machine every day. But uh, in the evenings, I have been over here. I'll make something and then come over here and sew it up like that holster. I've made a couple of those since then. And then this is kind of the pinnacle of my two weeks. I thought, man, if I can stitch like that, maybe instead of tooling, I could do some stitching. So here's a uh, holster. It's lined. I learned this is my first one that I lined because uh, sewing a lined holster is a lot of work, but not with, with the Cowboy 3200. And so the beauty is, is the stitches are all nice and straight. And of course, there are always things to learn as you go along. This was about as thick, I think, as this machine could take. This is two nine-ounce pieces of leather with a four-ounce in between. So I was pretty much at the max, but she did it, no problem. So let's get to the reason we're here. Number one thing that you always, the first thing you want to check right here is your forward and reverse. That's forward, that's reverse. Before you hit the go button, make sure this thing is going the right direction because the very last thing you want to do is poke a hole in something you've been working on, tooling on, in a place that you don't want a hole. And if it's in reverse and not in forward, that thing's going to back up and poke a hole one space back from where you think. So that's the first thing I want you to check. The second thing I want you to check is this thing right here. This raises and lowers your foot up, down, up, down. Um, when you start moving around or when you get out of a piece of work you're going to push this up and then you'll pull your leather out. But if you start sewing with this up it will not work and you will be janked. So don't do that. I'll, if you're ready to go, if you're going in the right direction, you've got that needle going the right way make sure this is down. I do this all the time. It's not okay. Now if you do start sewing up and you haven't done anything terrible, you can stop sewing and snip your threads and get out of the piece and start over again. So these are the two things I want you to know. Now I'm going to refer to our list. Uh, okay, this is the most important thing I'm going to tell you. Let's say you have a piece, this is not a good example. Let's say you have a piece in here and you're sewing and something goes wrong. The machine stops sewing. Obviously something is askew. Stop where you're at. Wait a minute, enjoy the train. Okay. Stop where you're at. Do not force the wheel. That's what everybody wants to do. They want to grab that wheel over here and force it. If you do that, you could slip a cam in this sewing machine and then you're going to be shipping that thing back somewhere so uh, Ryan can fix it. What you want to do is stop, get out your handy sewing scissors, and you want to cut, cut, cut. Don't pull anything out. Don't do anything drastic. drastic, drastic. Just uh, 
cut the thread at coming off the needle and cut the thread coming off the bobbin. You may have four threads coming off the bobbin, bobbin. but uh, you want to cut them all, remove your piece, and I guess we'll go to this section. This is something uh, Ryan and I talked about. So let's say that you did something and you had a bunch of string and it was it was uh, gumming up the works. That'll stop the whole machine. That's all it takes. So we're going to go talk about that and go take a look. Okay, so you're sewing along and it won't sew. You don't know what's wrong. You look underneath, there's four threads coming out of the bobbin. That's a great sign that something's wrong. If anything doesn't work right, stop. Once again, don't force anything. Cut your thread, cut your thread, remove your piece. At this point, you're probably going to have some thread hanging out of here. The first thing you can try to do is pull it out gently. If it doesn't pull out, don't force it. You've got your end cap right here. You're going to turn it. Then you're going to see some string hanging out possibly. Okay, so, sorry dog interruption. So, uh, you're going to look around in here and if there's any string, you're going to lightly try to pull it out. Most of the time it will come right out, no problem. Sometime, one day, it will get stuck in here. And you'll think, what do I do now? Um, right here are two black screws. And these are screws exactly, they seem to be, like the screws in my Colt single action. Heavy duty. There's also springs behind these screws. But one second, I'm going to grab a screwdriver. So there's a couple of things to be aware of while we're here. In that bobbin, you push it right there and it pops out and your bobbin comes out. In here, oh, I shouldn't have done it that way, but anyway, in here is a spring. You do not want to lose your bobbin spring. If you lose your bobbin spring, you're out of business. So since I just did this to myself, well I'm going to leave it out for now. So here's the bobbin out. I'm going to push this back in so I don't lose my spring. So what's happened is we have string locked up in one of the hooks here and you're not going to sew until you fix that. So what you're going to do is take your screwdriver and pull out these screws. This ring with my hand. the other screw over here and this piece comes off right here I'm gonna make sure I don't drop that so the the thing that we're looking at here is there is a hook see my finger I'm pointing at it this hook comes around and grabs that string every time it rotates and that's what makes the lock stitch as far as I know but this is what's gonna get locked up so there's your hook right there and here's this piece if there's a string in there and you can't get it out, it's because it's wedged in here. When you pull this out, you can pull out your string and then you can put this back in. And I'm going to hold that in and make sure it's totally cool. And then I'm going to put my mounting piece back on. And then I'm going to realize I put that on the right way, yes. No, this is the right way. And then I'm going to put my screws back in. Finding my hole there. And using my screwdriver.
All right, I'm not over tightening. I'm gonna, well, before I put my cap back on, I'm gonna put my bobbin back in. I would make sure you have any oil on your hands off your hands so it doesn't get on your string. You want that bobbin to go in this way. I'm gonna take my finger, push on the clip, release this. that in, shut it, I'm going to pull it up and get it in the loop, and that bobbin's ready. There's two ways to get this up through the hole. One is the uh, turn, you turn the needle in. Sometimes I just do it this way. Alright, and so then we put our cap back on. Alright. So now, theoretically, you're back in business and ready to sew again. Um, I'll use this scrap of leather to show. If you see my hand, you want to pull your string at 2 o'clock and you want to wrap it around your finger. You see people doing that and you wonder why. It's because if you don't, that bobbin will pull that thread right out of your hand and mess up your stitch. So now we're going to go uh, move into action the things that I just talked about. First we're going to, I'm going to pull this wheel down towards me and I go and I know now where it's going to go in. I'm going to drop my foot. So now we're locked and loaded. This is just a string fest here. Then this is down. Let me zoom out a little bit. So this is down and now I know that I'm going to move forward. So I'm going to put my foot on the pedal and I'm going to move forward and so oh wait but don't forget hold your string hold it for two or three stitches maybe four and we'll move forward so what if you want to do a lock stitch there's a couple of ways to do it we just went ahead three one way this is the easiest but not the best way is to put it in reverse and go back three. One, two, three. The only problem with this is when you go back forward, you've now gone through the same hole three times. But that's that's a big lock. So we're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna get out of this stitch. So if you're stitching a belt, let's say, and we get to the end of the belt, we're gonna get to the back, we're gonna get to our last hole, and on the upswing, is this needle starting to go up? We're going to shift into reverse, and we don't need to hold our string anymore, and we're going to go backwards two holes. You can go three holes back, and that locks it up. Okay, so we're going back. You can go faster than this if you want. Now, on the upswing of the needle, we're going to stop. Um, just using this to uh, pull the foot up, I have found it's better to use the right pedal. So you push the right pedal down and then go up. And that's the best way. Now, here's another important tip. Don't just yank this out of your machine. If you do, you can bend the needle. You want to reach up right here and grab your string. And while you're pushing your right foot down, you're going to pull some slack. And then you're going to pull your piece. You can drag the thread out of the bobbin. The bobbin doesn't care. And here's another thing you need to know. When you cut your string, don't cut it as close as you can. Cut some pieces off, and I'll show you why that are about this long and then when you look I don't know if it'll show you the knot is not in the leather right here it's out so you pull the other side the string right here and you pull the knot back into the leather and then you can trim it I'm gonna trim a lot of these so they don't get confusing so then you have your other two strings. I'm going to pull those tight to get the knot in the middle. And then I'm going to trim everything off short. So now you have a stitch. But my question was, and nobody would answer this for me, and it wasn't on the internet, was what about these little tails that are hanging out? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Some people use lighters. I found that if I use a lighter too long, it will burn the leather, and that's not cool. So I found this thing on the internet. It is the Thread Zap 2. It runs on a AA battery and has a little 
on off switch and I just take this and it heats up the two prongs and then I melt my nylon thread back in uh, right on top of the hole and it locks it so this thread is not going to accidentally pull out now because it's melted in being careful not to burn anything and it looks really good too so these are my main tips I'm going to look at my list now and see what Ryan said that I haven't discussed here so holding the threads at 2 o'clock always important making sure you're going the right direction before you hit the go button making sure your foot is down before you hit the go button um, don't force the machine if something's going wrong stop it's happening here everything is in the thread um, I have had thread accidentally get stuck on a, on a cable or stuck around the bobbin and that will stop the machine if the machine's not sewing it's usually the thread Nell Graham come here Nell Graham is here the dog um, we talked about the spring falling out of the bobbin and so these are kind of our top tips uh, a couple of things I did get that uh, I haven't seen anyone use is I purchased these magnetic hooks these just live on the side of my machine so my thread scissors are always there and my of course I didn't put it back so I can't find it my uh, thread burner I put it on a hook so it lives here and there's of course a lot more to know but I guess that's it so I'm Billy Hill and I hope this has helped this is just a few tips that I needed to know to get started um, I wish this video would have been around when I first started sewing I was really concerned about certain things and uh, start at the stock settings and then I'm going to do another video about your servo motor and the different speeds and all that but uh, I think that's separate from this video. Alright, thanks y'all. Bye.